Welcome back, everyone, to Tio No, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. And right now, we are funding for schools. The fact of the matter, upsetting as it may be to the parents and the educators, is that our funding for public education is already bloated beyond control and ticking up millions that could be spent towards improving the economy. Remedies are not always pleasant, but the government must always find a way to completely restructure how education is funded and cut out all the unneeded fat. By the time it's done, nobody will see any real damage to the school system. So, let's complete that one. And we will complete another focus very, very, very soon. I'm actually training the Navy right now. That's why we're losing fuel. Uh, we're actually going to edit this real quick. No, it's already too many comments. Actually, that's pretty darn good. Uh, we got a couple comments. And I forgot one comment that I didn't get to in the last video. Including, like, when... Or maybe I did, maybe I did. did I can't remember at this point. But when Iran falls apart, uh, help out the d Democratic side. Because apparently they can join the OFN, as someone did say. So... Maybe do that and play Kaiserreich or Kaiser Redux Ottomans. I might have said that in yesterday's video as well. I can't remember. I played so many campaigns that I can't remember what I did yesterday. So, it is what it is. Let's see. Uh, I guess Iberia? Well, a little bit of lag, but that's okay. I'm not sure if they're doing fighting their uh, dudes over there, but let's do that. And there's a, there's a reason why I'm not trying to um, do the next focus just yet. So, and I'll talk about it when we get there. So, right now, NPP is working together very well. American societies united after we repeal the Civil Rights Act. We have 58 far-right uh, MPP senators, 11 from the center. Republicans, Democrats make up only 31, which is great. Uh, this stuff, they're unhappy, but whatever, cutting a deal. We might do one of these by the end of Wallace's run, but we'll see what happens. But uh, <clears throat> the reason why I'm trying to buy time is because within the first two minutes, I think can really determine if you get monetized or not. And the next focus we're going to do, <laughs> I'm not sure if I can say it without stoking some ire, but then again, like from what the comments said from yes, the last video, uh, I hope you enjoy that title, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a real gamer title, but anyways, let's see, but another comment from Mr. saying, will I try, when will I try Burgundy, because I will play Burgundy, I promise, I just don't know when, actually, just because I was told to play this nation last, so, we'll, we'll get there eventually, ah, oh, I love Stringheim, wait, hold on, oh, that's not just, why can't I, hold on, why can't I see this stuff? Fall of Raknakar. Um, repair, I've never, I never looked at the focus view, but it looks a little bugged right now, to be honest with you. I love the Strangeheim stuff, but the center stuff looks a little bugged. At least at the time of this recording, so. Inventing Hutig's Rage. I, I don't want to read this, I don't want, you know, I don't want spoilers, so I'll play this Burgundy eventually. Especially if someone said from the focus or the event that says from Cradle to Grave, so. Yeah. Cool. All right. Now we can do it. This is why I didn't want to do it. So we could cut education funds, but how about we get lower funding for black schools? It's blatantly unfair that the government is taking vast amounts of money from the hardworking white Americans just to pour them into trying to educate lazy inner city black youths. This solution kills two birds with one stone. Not only are we saving money, we're also be giving those blacks a good reminder of their proper place in this society. Jesus Christ. I... Oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. I know this this campaign is going to come back and haunt me, probably. Yeah. You know what I would love to see? Either, like, Alex Rambler, maybe ISP, or even Provis, play TNO, you know, George Wallace. <laughs> oh, man. I, I hope someday they do it, but I really doubt they would. I really doubt it. But anyways, hope you guys are having a great day. I'm doing okay myself. Let's cut down some of that debt. And we're going straight for education in the first half of this episode, or how far it takes. So, enforced... Uh, enforced segregation funding is what we'll do next. So, uh, guns are coming along. Oh, better anti air. Well, why not? And, and it is 69. Happy Happy New Year, everyone. Hope you're having a great New Year, 1969. So, hopefully, new tech. Funny tricks with basic budget cuts are clearly not enough. With some new guidelines, that the remaining school subsidies can be redistributed, redistributed so that they can reach schools with good enough results and that uh, we know. It will be used pr appropriately and properly. And everyone knows what better results mean. The figures don't lie. Oh, boy. All right, so let's see. It's almost... Uh, we can grab that one first. I think we'll just do a lot of uh, industry stuff for 1970 stuff and research speed. So we might as well at this point. So Dix's little stand. Uh, stabilize the barrier because you can. We're doing this... I think I said this last time as well. We're trying to help out that barrier so much that it's probably just all going to collapse in on us. So... Alright, I'm going to get the next focus done. Thank you. Oh, nice, cool. And enforce segregated funding. Nice. Well, maybe not nice, but, you know. I'm role-playing here. Like I said in the last video, this 
what the choices I make in this video may or may not necessarily reflect my own beliefs, so <laughs> Dixie stand. The crowd was decidedly larger than at his last inauguration. A lot more supporters cheering from the front and a lot more detractors protesting at the back. This pleased George Wallace as he swore his oath upon the whole of Bible. He'd been worried that he wouldn't get this far, yet America clearly placed its trust in supporting him and its determination to do what he needed to be done. That was all the motivation he needed to steal himself for the coming term. Four years ago, I came to use an, as an insurgent. I stood as a lone voice in resistance against those who would, who would seek to erode our great Anglo-Saxon identity. You, the people of our God-blessed United States, stood up and joined me, and together we secured the future of our culture and our liberty against those who would risk it all in the name of progress. Now, once again, you have placed your faith in me, and I vow in the name of the all God Almighty that I shall execute your will. There are those still who among us who would like to choose, who choose to squander the many boons they have been given in the name of naive idealism. I hope that after today they will reevaluate their position. You and I together will show them the true will of the people, and our will will not be silenced in the name of freedom. And in the name of, of the true American way, we will stand firm against that which would seek to divide us. <clears throat> the crowd roared, equal parts cheered from the front, and boos from the back. Countless banners waved fiercely in the wind, be they stars and stripes, flags, uh, state flags, the uh, Confederate uh, battle flag. Or probably it's most likely the battle flag of the Army of Northern Virginia. Wallace grinned with pride as he glazed. Glazed? Oh, he's, no, he's not glazing today, but he's gazed upon the myriad masses who had come from all over to see him. These were the men who had built America with their own hands, the women who had birthed and raised their, those men, and the children who would one day inherit the American legacy. With them on his side, the path ahead was clear. It was time to finish the work. Segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. Oh, look how happy he is. And Mr. Alabama, this is good for business. I actually looked up, looked him up a little bit. Oh, intervenes in the Wallace legislation. We'll see about that. But um, uh, like he had, he was four terms as Alabama governor, which is kind of wild. But Supreme Court intervenes. Actually, let's take a look at that because uh, let's see where is it? Political landscape. There are seven conservatives and two liberals. <clears throat> Supreme Court intervenes in the Wallace legislation. Reporters from across Maryland have described the situation in D.C. as the Capitol is becoming engulfed in turmoil between the Wallace administration and the Supreme Court of the U.S. already a, like a few weeks or maybe just a week after his re-inauguration. Recently, the Wallace administration forwarded a piece of legislation called the Education Rebudgeting Act towards the Senate in an attempt to rebalance funding towards schools across the U.S. However, the U.S. or the Supreme Court, or Scottis, has declared the bill to be unconstitutional and cited that the bill is filled with obvious setbacks against African-American schools throughout this country and has been said to be a deliberate attack on the African-American population's rights and freedoms in the U.S., as said by one Supreme Court justice. However, despite the protests from the Supreme Court, Wallace's base of supporters found no wrong within the administration's piece of legislation. President Wallace himself responded by accusing the Supreme Court of attacking his rights as leaders of the U.S. and repairing the broken education system of the U.S. by directing funds towards... Provenly efficient centers of education rather than the unneeded schools that leach from the budget. Supporters of the FRNPP have stood behind President Wallace as many of us have come to the steps of the Scottists with a variety of chants and banners, some demanding that the Supreme Court to stop acting so politically and to realize that the President is working for the more patriotic American people. However, the black community has stood in defiance of Wallace's supporters and stood with that Supreme Court. Many have found anger with Wallace in his actions, actively protesting the President and various MPP associations due to the distress of the party with the President's proposal. As said by one African American man, this is the U.S. of A. Not Germany, not Japan. We are here to find justice for all. How do we dare accept the actions of such a vile attack against the already small education provided for African American children? Some larger cities have even reported work protests and strikes supporting the Supreme Court against the Education Rebudgeting Act, the ERA. Complain all you want. Uh, well, we'll see what happens. But we have 58 far-right senators, so... We'll see. <clears throat> Alright. Ah, cut down that debt. Look at that. George Walsh is doing such a good job with the debt. He's trying to provide... Well, I could do, uh... The, the video, the song behind it, but... Yeah, there's... I already played as Scotland once, but... Or, eh, whatever. I'm not sure why it fires for us, though. Like, we're not the UK. <clears throat> so, Supreme Court approves the Education Rebalancing or Rebudgeting Act. After days of debate and discussion of constitutional interpretation, journalists report that the ongoing fight between the Supreme Court and the President of the United States has finally come to a conclusion and an overwhelming approval for the ERA by the Supreme Court justices. Despite the continuously bloody political punches back and forth from the Supreme Court to the President, the matter has been finally resolved and Walsh's plan to reorganize the fundings of schools across the U.S. in somewhat call a direct attack against African American schools. What confuses me is the question as to why this debate had to happen in the first place, the President said with the laughter in his victory. After all this time, after all this debate, 
The justices of the Supreme Court have once again come to the conclusion that once my administration is working towards a better America, an America without a crippling amount of debt incited by useless schools that can be closed down anyway, he said, walking away with some key members of his administration. Many across the South have expressed their happiness with the bill's passing, saying that whether it hurts the blacks or not, we've been taken care of, and that's what the president knows what matters. God bless that man. However, some have taken a grave amount of solemnity in knowing that the president successes. Many members of the RDs in the central branch of the NPP have stated their overall disgust with the approval of the act despite the obvious constitutional issues of targeting a specific race in legislation. As said by one Chicagoan who came to D.C. to protest, the African-American community has expressed their absolute resolution in ensuring that the president does not interfere with their lives longer and that it begun a wide range of protests to the clauses of the ERA. Some cities, some large cities have even begun re reported rioting to prevent the closing of schools whose budgets have been slashed by the act. To pull the National Guard, let's call it a day. Well, maybe that's what you get for getting federal funding involved in states education, as probably said by George Wallace. States own salaries. Why the heck is the federal government expecting to give out cash for the salary of every single gosh darn teacher in the country? Managing these kinds of day-to-day -day expenses is much better left to the local state administration. They'll know much better how to spend and how they'll get the money from Washington pencil pusher. Uh, better than how he would know. Not to mention, look at how much money the federal government can save on it. We are economists here. <laughs> hey, look, they're happy with us. Yay, they're happy. At least they're finally happy with us. Finally, I've worked so hard to get their happiness. And it's finally paying off. Wallace battles Supreme Court in second case for school defunding. Reports, w reporters warn that the nation, not to rest after an exhaustion of the fight for the school budgeting act, as has been indicated in the past few days, a new battle is set to reemerge as the Supreme Court is taking issue with the Wallace administration's continuous steps to produce the effects of the act. This time, however, President Wallace and his administration has coordinated efforts with state and local leadership to produce laws which will lay down the same effects on the act while bypassing the federal government. The president's administration has labeled the opening of another fight of the Supreme Court to have to be wrongfully and politically charged at best, without consideration for the well-being of the nation, as said by an aide of the president accompanying several within the administration, to openly debate the Supreme Court of the U.S. Wallace's administration has worked towards discrediting the second battle already, and Wallace's supporters across the country have supported these notions. These justices think that just because they disagree with the beliefs of the president and the MPP that they can manhandle the law to make it fit their view? That's dictatorship. We support Wallace's success. One member of the far-right MPP declared on the steps of the Supreme Court, which is technically true. I mean, like, we literally just had an election. And they supported us, so we might as well do as ba many bad things, or good things, depending on your viewpoint, uh, early on in our uh, second term. However, the Supreme Court has found support from a variety of groups within the U.S.'s social spheres. Many within the R.D. Party has accused the president of attempting to undo the political processes of the U.S. government by appealing directly to the states, to the states despite the ongoing contestment within Congress, as said by a Republican Democratic senator, who wished to remain anonymous. Furthermore, the African-American community has felt outraged once more as seeing President Wallace's second attempt has given rise to a wealth of protests from American cityscapes to the countryside. I am well within power. Then again, you should really get things passed by Congress. Yeah. Yeah, uh, let's go with this one. It's 300 days, but whatever. I don't really care. What else are we going to research, right? And... Alright. So, we can do the states campaign full. But I was recommended that we should probably do maintain educational subsidies. So if you'd like to read about the states can pay in full, go right ahead. Improve states' rights and get, save us some federal money. Uh, that'll hurt the states. Uh, the, the voter base will be more content. Expenses will decrease sharply, as well as lower subsidies to the states. We can pass a bill into the law. Segregate states' subsidies. It's very dubious at the best for this litigation of this. Legality of it. But, huh, the Supreme Court wall, uh, approves Wallace local legislation. Once more, a breaking news reporter of the second battle uh, between the Wallace administration and Scottis has come to a head tonight, and the Supreme Court has officially issued the response. In accordance with the constitutional powers vested within the President, George C. Wallace aims to aim to coordinate a reorganization of a selected number of urban schools that has been reviewed and approved by the Supreme Court, in accordance with the Supreme Law of the U.S. Thus, the Wallace administration has been approved within uh, the federal courts to do as it pleases in their newly structured plan. Across the U.S., political proponents are loyal to the President Wallace and rejoice in the court's decision, with one MPP governor stating that the unnecessary battle fought between the Supreme Court and the President of the U.S. has made one thing clear. The President has secured his powers and the American people are free by Wallace's actions. Furthermore, there have been a large number of rallies dedicated to the far-right MPP and the Wallace's own image as a stream of Democrats have taken side with the more radical former opposition.
Where Wallace has succeeded, however, many claim to have experienced a desperate loss. A second time, a second battle, a second time a battle has been waged with Wallace, and in this recurrent battle we've lost. A disgruntled protester, the central branch of the MPP, declares to the crowd around her. Around the streets, reporters have claimed to have seen a tense silence among the African American communities. We're exhausted, we're tired, but more importantly, we're pissed off. And you'll see what comes now that you're taking out your frustrations on, on the children of the U.S. Another victory in the books, and then we're actually going to go down this way, so. Maintain educational subsidies. Some radical types within our party and even among the Democrats believe that we should devolve education funding to the states, thus giving them greater political and cultural autonomy. While this might sound enticing, radical social experimentation within with our youngest is exactly what the kind of thing Wallace administration stands against. No radical reformers needed at this point. We cannot accept the risk coming from completely revamping the school organization or giving up a control of how our children are educated. There's no point in alienating people with extremes. The MPP looks a little better in northern states, which is a great thing. And they'll expect more states' rights legislation will be passed. Cool. Beach Boys found murdered. Oh, no. Police were called to a house in L.A. Beverly Crest neighborhood this morning after a newskeeper or housekeeper reported that the door was unlocked and she could see bloodstains inside. When they arrived, they discovered one of the most tragic and horrifying mass murders of the decade. Oh, no. Beach Boy member members... Brian Wilson, his brother Dennis, and cousin Mike Love were at record producer Terry Melker's house on March 8th to celebrate the release of their latest album. Also in tennis were Brian's pregnant wife, Marilyn, singer Mark Lindsay of the Raiders, and Melker's mother, movie star Doris Day. Whoa! During the night of March 8th to 9th, the unidentified group of people entered the property on foot after cutting the phone lines. Doris Day was leaving the party in her car and must have seen them. The car's front door was open and she was shot four times in the abdomen. Oh boy. The group was then gained, then gained access to the front door through an open window and then brought all the house inhabitants to the living room. Brian Wilson and Melkor were stabbed multiple times to death while Marilyn and Lindsay were found shot to death on the back porch, likely attempting to flee. Dennis Wilson's body was far from more heinously killed compared to the others. He was shot in both his knees, his abdomen was stabbed over four dozen times, and his face was severely disfigured by blunt trauma. The words thief and pig were written in blood on the living room walls. The only survivor of the event was Mike Love, who endured half a dozen knife wounds and being shot in the shoulder before passing out from blood loss. He was currently comatose in intensive care in Cedars Sinai Medical he Hospital or ho Medical Center, Beverly Hills, and investigators hope he'll soon wake and help identify the killers. What kind of monster would do such a thing? What the heck? Not my beach boys. Not the sons of America. Whether Iberia wants or not, they will be a stable nation. And we keep cutting down that depth for now. We got a lot of political power, which is good, because we might need it later on, but we'll see what happens. Saudi Arabia kind of likes... I've been Let him in. Oh, boy, what are we doing? Ah, oh, let him in. Lock him up. Please go with... Ooh, which one do we... Which one should they go? Piece of last. We just dodged a bullet. Uh, probably this one. We don't want to dissolve the council. Yeah, probably our loyal advisors. I think that one was better, so we'll see what happens. After this, we're going to go ahead and do... Schools cost how much? Trips, training, labs, all sorts of expensive, wasteful nonsense is being pushed to the top of the expenses list. School's job is to get a bunch of whiny kids together in a room for a couple hours uh, and telling them how much how numbers work, how much money you get really need to do that. How much do you really need to do that? And the government is to give its valuable funds over to the education system. Maybe for once, it's the schools that should learn a little bit about managing finance. Some more cutbacks are in order. Look how much money we can save. The quality of education will suffer. Unfortunately, it's got to be like this. We'll alienate the CNPP. That's fine. Slaughterhouse Five. One book that enjoyed overwhelming success during the anti-war years was Kurt Vonnegut's classic Slaughterhouse Five. Um, I think I've already read this one before, like in a different campaign. If you'd like to read about this, this happens pretty much every campaign, like I just said. So, Slaughterhouse Five. Uh, through the book's anti-war message, one can see Vonnegut's disdain for the Reich and the Japanese, and so it goes. Cool. More stabilization. And just in case we're hemorrhaging people. I always like to make sure that we can, like, dissuade people from the R's and the D's, so that'd be good. Oh. Yes, better guns. M16A1, I never fired one. Sounds like a fun gun to fire, though. 58 billion, less than 55 billion, not bad. Nah, schools cost how much? Oh, look at that, so we're trying to pass a bill. All 58 of our party's far-right senators... Man, my voice just cracked there. Uh, pass, support it. And three, I love the Democrats. It, well, most of them didn't want to do it, and none of the Senate wants to do it. None of the Republicans want to do it, but the Democrats, we can always find compromises with the Democrats. So we have 61 senators supporting this. Good enough. Diminish Repu the Republican image. How dare you, Republicans? How dare you? All right, let's just keep doing more industrial stuff. Let's do uh, research speed, actually. 218 days. That's not too bad. Uh, oh, oh my God! I bury a why. 
Why? Why did you do that? I spent so much money on, on you guys. <laughs> spent so much time and money, and this is how they do it. Oh my goodness. But we're going to do a foolproof plan because that was what I was recommended. We've tested the illegal waters with some of those sneaky spending bills. Now is the time to see what happens when we throw all the subtlety out of the windows. A new bill written by the National Progressive Star Wars shall enter votes. Representing the purest form of the pro-segregation faction. Naturally, a bill this offensive will die in the water, but seeing the proceedings will let us gauge responses. And when time comes for the real bill comes, everyone will remember the alternative. The bill keeps getting bigger. All right, fine with us. Ooh. On street construction authority. Wait, what? Broken here, the sum of all fears. Approximately 40 minutes ago, a B-52 Strato Fortress on a standard airborne alert patrol out of the Naval Air Station cell files and ice and radioed a distress signal and accompanying encrypted message. The message indicated that the aircraft's vertical stabilizer parts were broken off and the crew would be forced to ditch into the Norwegian Sea. Aboard the aircraft was one Mark 28 thermonuclear weapon and as such, the incident is being classified as broken arrow. There's a loose nuclear bomb out there, my friends. Given uh, known weather conditions and established United States Air Force safety protocols, will we believe that the crew is most likely alive and floating approximately 115 miles to the southwest of Yan Mine Island? The wreckage of their craft and potentially the accompanying weapon would most likely still be visible from the air. There are no indications that the German military is presently aware of the situation, but given the known German radar capabilities, it is overwhelmingly likely that this will not be the case within 24 hours' time. We recommend that relevant Navy and Air Force elements be immediately tasked to rescue and retrieve all operations. So ordered. I forgot about that. I forgot that that could happen. Uh, give those people some money. I don't care who wins. There you go. You can have that too. Uh, Australia. How about we help them out? Yeah. We love the Australians here. Cool. Ah, look at that debt. Slash. Less than 52 billion. School costs how much? Yeah, we do, we do a fool a fool poof pen. The Germans send a flotilla. Top secret broken arrow. Per photographs from our keyhole reconnaissance satellites, the Kriegs Marines dispatch a sizable flotilla to minesweepers, submarine rescue ships, and even cruisers to the approximate location of the Down 52. Additionally, Luftwaffe aircraft have been detected in the Norwegian Sea by multiple Iceland based radar stations. We believe that they've detected the B 52's crash and intend to salvage wreckage into the nuclear weapon along with any survivors. This is an absolutely critical threat to our national security and technological capabilities. However, we can stop this. The CIA possesses certain back channels within the German government. We advise that a secret message be sent to the German leadership at once, demanding that they halt the flotilla so that we can rescue the crew. To otherwise, to do otherwise would be a blow to our national security and prestige. Although it may decrease tension, what should we do? Take the hit. We can pa let him pass. No, 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 no. T tell him to back off. N B E N E B A gets an A plus from Congress. The fight between the rights of the state and local government against the great powers of the federal government of the U.S. of A. has torn at Americans for decades, the culmination of which has led to fighting both in the streets of southern U.S. and the government offices which govern the nation as such. However, the Walls administration has made a small breakthrough for the states today, as the National Education Budgetary Act, also known as NEVA, was signed into approval through the Senate, being signed into law by the President himself, and severely cutting education spending whilst maintaining it as a federal decision rather than delivering it to the states. The Walls administration recognizes NEVA as a push, a small push, needed to bring about a recognition of the rights of states while maintaining a degree of power towards the federal focuses of the country. <clears throat> Treasurer Wilbur Mills spoke today regarding the passage of NEVA, saying that while NEVA retains federal control over a degree of the education system, know that it is still the administration's top priority to ensure that each and every American feels empowered by the federal government while earning the money they deserve by cutting the fat on this bloated economy. However, while the men and women of the far right cheer for dreams of a brighter economy, others, many of whom working uh, or have worked within the education system, moan in disturbance regarding President Wallace's and the executive's cut on the education spending, leading many to fear that a complete chokehold and blackout on mo in monetary terms for schools across the country. What can I do? I teach history to sophomores for God's sakes. How can I do that if we're not even going to be able to scrap together money for the janitors? Cry one Nevadan protester. Just enough. Step forward. It's not a big step. But it's a step that's needed for the education system of this great country. Germans, okay, I love it. Every single time we've done this so far, the Germans always fold. Like the first time we had them do that earlier in, um, I can't remember, it was the pilot powers. They fold immediately. The Japanese with the shrimp boat crew, they folded. Broken Arrow, the Germans fold again. America first, I guess. According to Keyhole Satellite Data and our radar stations on Iceland, the Luftwaffe and the Kriegsmarine assets that the Germans have been moving into the Norwegian Sea have withdrawn. It's clear from this information that the German government has ascended to our, or acceded to our demands and that they do not intend to intercepting our own rescue and salvage efforts. Evidently, they were intimidated by resolve and did not wish to seek the, or escalate this situation. Our combined Navy and Air Force task 
or task force is still en route to the crash site. With any luck, all personnel involved will be safe at home within the next 48 to 4 72 hours. Excellent work, everyone. And American society grows a little bit more unified. Exactly what we need for what we're going to do. Aw, yeah. George Wallace, America's hero. Operational success. Great job. There you go. You can have a bunch of money. I don't even want to bother reading that. Who should we send? Or what should we send to those places? Um, you can send some vehicles. I don't care. Southeast Asia. I'll do Asia. Destabilize Japan. Snufung. Korean resistance? Sure, why not? They're happy. They're unhappy. That's fine. That's totally fine with me. Hmm. I love the centers. Oh, uh, actually, it's working together well. You know what? Let's increase unity. We have enough political power that we're, we're okay to do that. So, the Diplomatic Arena. We don't care about that. I don't know why that's still here. Because we already did the stuff against Japan. So, it doesn't make any sense. All right. Any more? Yes. Yes. Less than 50 billion. Segregated teachers pay. Having a more direct oversight over how school funds are dealt out gives the administration some interesting op options. Blatantly forcing educational facilities to give lower wages to black teachers is a risky and radical move, but the symbolic value value of such an act would be invaluable in showing the who is in really in charge. Advanced segregation. Legality of the action is dubious at best. Conservative is a prime opportunity for impeachment. <laughs> Please. Voters, uh, the voter base will be, be more confident and alienate the CNPP. Center, of course, PP, which is totally fine because eventually, like I said earlier, the bill keeps getting bigger. That we will be going with deregulate DC, we will be doing the Unimix is strong, welcome to America, and we'll be doing probably some of the Perth conference stuff. So, we have ways of trying to entice the CPP, the center, a little bit more. Oh, resistance movement, sure, why not? So, the bill just keeps on growing bigger and bigger and bigger. After we have, yep, doesn't even matter. Look at the Southern Education Betterment Act. Oh, God, I love the Democrats, too. Another day to sit here sweating with, within the U.S. Capitol. One of the most powerful, influential places on the face of the earth. Another bill having to come in here to deal with? What's this, though? As you're drinking your water, you see the report laid out in front of you by one of your assistants. Oh, crap, it's the day for Wallace's bill. Suddenly, panic fills your mind. The realization that one of the biggest bills to pass through the Senate within the history of the Wallace administration is coming through, and your throat is barely ready to handle speeches today. Now, what are we dealing with here? The U.S. Senate should now begin voting over the passage of the United States Bill S.399, was titled The Southern States Freedom of Educational Rights and Presidents Act, sponsored by the far-right branch of the NPP. The President Pro Tempore stated, The Southern States Freedom over Socio-Educational Rights and the Presidents Act, Presidents Act seeks to reorganize lawful precedent over the matter of segregation within the U.S. with the following clauses. A nationwide enforcement over segregation laws, both in the U.S., Southern U.S., and Northern states as well, extending the laws and beyond the prospect of African-American population. The extension of segregationist policy from the educational system to a variety of spheres of American society, such as workplaces and places of entertainment, as well as, uh, as well as, before the pro tempore continue to speak, he seemed to pause, maybe in shock or maybe horror, as well as the reevaluation and possible de-escalation of the legal procedure within the Cases of first degree murder in the case of African Americans. The floor, no, the whole building seemed to clench into the sounds as, as that at the mentions. Is the president actually looking to undo legal precedent of bad word lynchings? I thought to myself before the whispers erupted. Finally, the president pro tempore began to count the votes. The room filled with, the, with no after no. Maybe the occasional yes had caused the senators in the room to be shocked, but the bill came out to be a massive failure in the end. In the days following the chaos of the vote for Wallace's new bill that crashed and burned, my assistant handed me a letter along with my morning coffee, having been told that it's your eyes only. I opened the envelope and read, While, while recent congressional failures create setbacks, such as inevitable, not the end of partnership between presidents and senators, but administration is more than willing to compromise with those with, those with potential, and, and so what do you say? Dear God. Oh boy. Oh good God. Yeah, this is... Oh, we got a lot of... Uh, hold on. Yeah, as you can see, I, like I said, I was training a lot of these guys, so. Um, I just wanted you guys to all train. Go back and compare. There you go. Cool. Cross in Nanjing. Pray they survive. I need to play China. I still need to play There's so many nations in TNO. There's so much content in TNO, like, Jesus Christ. The desert did, did a great job, but... Last voyage of the SS US or the Stonewall bus. Let's do this one first. It just starts with a sudden blackout. 205 patients of the Stonewall stop and stare at the sudden dark. It's 120 outside in the morning. And bartenders reach for the panic buttons as they try to calm the customers. The four undercover officers curse as they fiddle with the switches and the flash liquor back to life. Those few who realize what's about to happen began pushing their way through the crowd, but the moral squad have already locked down the window exits and are marching through the doors, flashlights in hand as they bust the biggest homosexual establishment in New York. The raid doesn't, 
doesn't meet with a receptive crowd, to say the least. As officers lead those in women's clothing to their toilets, may, many resist. As common knowledge of those who get arrested by the moral squad, as cross-dressed men don't make it out without bruises, spit-drenched faces, manhandling. Men with faces lean and kicked with makeup rest, wrestle with their cuffs and spit on the captors. None of the bar's patrons have made it this... And, made it this far in a world with most of you despises them without getting a little rough around the edges and when the man pushes them around they push right back by the time the raid concludes about 150 people are under arrest but more are gathering in the late night darkness of the big apple and a storm is brewing that cannot be contained just routine raid carry on each boy beach boys ex associate charged in wilson milk or murders oh boy this morning charles manson was charged with first degree murder in the aftermath of the terrifying killings that gripped the nation last march Manson, a self-proclaimed guru of the delusions, delusions of grandeur and a history of violent sex crimes. Wow. Met Terry, met Terry Milker after a chance encounter with a Beach Boys member, Dennis Wilson. Wilson, hoping to, encounter, um, hoping to aid Manson's dream of becoming a published uh, folk musician, introduced him to Milker, but they had a falling out due to Manson's erratic and erratic behavior. Violent and erratic behavior. Manson was already in LAPD custody for an unrelated petty crime when he was charged. It was called a followers colloquially known as The Family. Earlier, it caught the FBI's attention for their leader's support of the Frank, of Daddy Francis Parker Yaki in preaching a bizarre synthesis of messianic apocalypticism and white supremacy. When questioned if his beliefs were motivated by the crime, Manson claimed that the murders were all personal and unrelated to his plans to, to the wake of the world, as prophesied race war with its namesake from a Beach Boys song. According to Manson, Wilson adapted the lyrics to a song, Cease to Exist, without crediting him and deserved retribution. A court date is set and a conviction is all but guaranteed due to the band member Lack Love's agreement to testify after emerging from a coma last week. Love also announced that he and the bandmates Carl Wilson, Al Jardine, and Bruce Johnson unanimously agreed to dissolve the band out of respect to Brian and Dennis's memory. Thank God they caught him. The last voyage of the SS United States. <clears throat> the few crowds gathered along the pier of New York City were seeing the end of an era as a large, graceful passenger liner was being gently nudged into a de its designated spot. The gangways were raised, and off came a few of the group few groups of passengers, but nowhere near the number that great ship could hold. The smoke from the twin funnels. Uh, dwindled as the engines were shut off, and the lights were eventually turned off as well. Seventeen years before, the crowds were much larger, more jubilant, as the SS U.S. left New York on his maiden voyage, designated or designed by the famed naval architect William Francis Gibbs. The U.S. was the largest passenger ship ever built in America, as well as one of the safest. So it was virtually fireproof, with aluminum, asbestos, and fiberglass composing almost everything inside the ship. Only the butcher's block in the kitchen and the grand mahogany piano were the only wooden furnishings allowed on the board. Besides her size and safety, she was fast. She made the transatlantic crossing in three days, ten hours, and forty minutes at an average speed of over thirty-five knots, capturing the coveted blue ribbon for the fastest ship across the Atlantic. Despite the subsidies provided by the American government so she could be turned into a troop ship in the event of war, the U.S. hasn't turned a profit in years. The lack of passenger travel between the U.S. and Europe and the arrival of new passenger jetliners that can cross the ocean in a fraction of the time or of even the world's fastest ships has sounded the death knell of the ocean trade. What the future holds for this great liner remains to be seen an end of an era. What this should do is turn into a tourist destination. Just like what they do with like, like a lot of old boats, like the USS Constitution. Turn it into a tourist destination. Why not? Insurrection Oman. We shall overcome. Actually, can I get involved in Oman? That would be kind of fun. And my apologies. Um, I was drinking some coffee there, so... I love coffee. Nope, it doesn't look like it. So, we shall overcome. The greatest LGBT riot in the history of the U.S. began with a logistics problem. The morals, please. I grabbed a whole 28 cases of beer and 19 kegs of hard liquor. But the patrol vans occupied elsewhere, they had nowhere to put. Instead, they kept the patrons on lockdown as the wagons arrived far too slowly for a police operation. The patrons, of course, are understandably upset, and those few not under arrest quickly join the growing crowds gathered outside the building. Many of them know that once the end dies, so does the breathing, leaving, breathing heart of the gay culture and the greatest city in the world. They have everything to lose. As Mafia members and patrons are loaded onto wagons, man is still struggling and a lone bullet breaks out. We shall overcome a protest song written for the South African War. Finds are skeptical ears in another angry crowd facing another unwinnable fight. Growing cheers, growling shouts of gay power echo from the crowds, which have swelled to bursting in the streets. Storm at... Storme Delvari falls to the floor, struggling against four officers, and all heck breaks loose. Records are unclear of what happened, exactly happened next. In a wave of anger, the mob pushes over police wagons, hurls bricks at the officers retreating in Stonewall, presses garbage against the broken windows. Many of the most repressed members of the gay community led the riot. The drag queens and the street boys leading a wild, wild charge. Silvio Rivera, notable drag queen, will remember it as the greatest night of her life. The doors of the inn are broken open with a battering ram. Officers inside prepare for a fiery stand, and then the police trucks arrive. Fire to the fuel. Oh, let things burn. Burn, 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 burn. 
You know what? I always go flexible automation just because I think it's better. Let's go streamline automation techniques. It's not going to make a massive deal of difference, though. So. Operation success, but what about this? Kick lines and tear gas. Well, the initial reaction is one of rage. Officers blood and coated with garbage and in wrecked with violence. And the fairies did it. The fairies. Violence explodes on the streets as the police officers take the law into their own hands and hammer their rage onto the defenseless. The mob arrayed against them is far too gone to care. They form the rough outline of a cabaret chorus line and began to sing. Their voices are pierced in the late night, so police have had enough of being needled. They rush to the line. Many women get hammered with nightsticks as bedlam spreads to the surrounding streets. Crowds run around the police officers, laughing gaily like warriors in the light of burning cars. By the time the riots come to a halt, Christopher Street is blocked. Half the cars on it are overturned, and every garbage can for a mile round has been emptied into the street. Witnesses describe an odd beauty to the refuse strewn street like a river of broken toys. Of course, the streets aren't the only thing that breaks the the only thing that breaking the news. All throughout the next day, crowds gawk at the burnout show of Stonewall when the next night comes, when they are joined by songwriters, poets, activists, and tourists washing down the streets in a tide of exuberant energy. Allen Ginsberg notes on the way back that the guys there were so beautiful they've lost that wounded look that the, the dudes all had ten years ago. An incredible sight. I'm just here to cut teachers' pay. <laughs> ah, good. Less than 47 billion? Not bad. Not bad. Actually, what can we do here first? Um, oh, we're still trying to pass the bill. I mean, it's going to pass anyways, hopefully so. A Chinese Rebels? Yes. I can't wait to uh, TNO2 so we can actually see a great big Chinese-Japanese war. But we're going to finish this as best we can with... This. Just look at all the spare cash that I found. One benefit from the Wallace administration's surgical focus on the state-driven education system is that the exercise has rationalized a great deal of educational budget. Perhaps not to the extent Wallace's most ardent states' rights supporters have crowned of, but enough to meaningfully impact America's fiscal matters and metrics. It never hurt to have more cash, after all. Let us pour more dollars into this economy until it bursts. Big business loves us. Okay, stability. We get during a dream. Nice. Seba cushions the cushions south cushions through a congressional approval. Teachers have grown in both potential and power within the American political sphere throughout the recent age. Whether it be through acts of protest across the streets of America or tenacious or tenacious educators taking the political seats, such as presidential candidate LBJ. However, benefiting legislation has been turned away as Southern ex Educational Betterment Act, or SEBA, seeks to further direct the little remaining federal education funds towards the Southern schools due to an apparent lack of quality and a great prominence of poverty. However, while some cheer for the actions of the President of the South, others claim it to be just one more step towards segregation in America, in particular. News journalists have taken to the streets to investigate the words and actions of educators themselves to witness their opinion on the matter. For example, Mississippi High School social studies teacher Matthew J. Brown has said that our family and I are greatly celebrating regarding the issue, considering that we can finally move up in the world and quit relying on paycheck to paycheck. Whoever's going on about segregation isn't, isn't my business. I'm not, I'm not on the board of administrators, am I? Sorry to those kids, but I've been working with scraps for the past few years. President Wallace has given us a blessing here. However, not everyone is so ready and eager to shake hands with the president regarding SEBA. In fact, the open protests from school districts across the northeast of the U.S. had broadcasted a sense of disappointment and fear for all the opposition of the President Wallace. First, we get our budget completely slashed, and now they're going to pour everything they have down and all across the South, where they're telling African Americans no at the door. How the heck is this justice and liberty? Shattered protests in New Jersey high school mathematics teacher Michael P. Foxworth. The South needs us, and why all you want? Term two. Cool. All right. Hey, look at that. Operation success. Good, good, good. Anything here? Nope. All right. So we can do this stuff, but our beer is going to probably fall apart. Oh, we can save us one more time for good old time's sake. Nice. All right. So after this part of the focus tree, what are we going to focus on next? Because we did this. I do want to do some of this stuff as well. And I do maybe want to try this after the midterms, maybe. Now, yesterday. It, you know, the first half of the episode, would, oh, concerning reports. We did some of this, but abroad, we might want to do abroad as well. And maybe deregulate DC, yeah. Oh, wait, it'll little work look a little worse in northern states. That's not good. Empower unions? Ooh, that's not good. Well, maybe piss them off for now and help them out later. But concerning reports. Rear Admiral Dodge since gathered most of the command staff at the meeting room and delivering them the reports he received hours ago. Their small post at Kodiak was the closest and first station to hear news from the USS Bast alone about the Japanese subs following the course. The first time being Dodgson ordered the destroyer to maintain course and send an alert to every other ship in Alaskan waters. The men present were a mix of Coast Guard and Navy officers, along with two technicians working communications when the destroyer reported in. Dodgson was briefed with them. The ship was not only following the Barcelona, but in American waters. The officers looked at him in silent terror as the possibilities of what the sub was up to ran through every man's head. Had the Japanese suddenly gotten lost, or was this the start of something sinister? And what could be done in short of waiting for the submarine attack to attack? Dodgson simply suggested sending another ship, and hoped that the Japanese got the message to turn back. A lone wolf could be scared off easier than a whole pack. The submerged exile. We'll see what happens. 
Nice. Dots on the screen. The man uh, sitting behind the radar uh, display watches the two ships follow each other. The queen fish further away, but moves them fast. Every listening post and antenna station has been put on high alert for any education of more Japanese warships. He looked over the screen next to him, the technician shaking his head as the situation remained stagnant. As he went up to smoke a cig cigarette, its display showed an unidentified ship distant to the Barcelona and this Japanese sub, but approaching the coast nonetheless. Boys, we got something heading our way, or boss. Shuffling or stuffing his pack into his jacket pocket. He stayed uh, to view another. Then three more dots crossing into American waters, a column of ships. Crap, that's a whole squadron. Call up Anchorage now. With all odds on the little blips. There was no longer something the Navy could handle on its own. More ships didn't help. Came through to Washington, there's an entire Japanese fleet on the way. Operation success, good. Maybe they discovered that we're meddling in their affairs. School's calmed down. Yeah, that's good. Destabilized Japan because of that. Three knocks echoed from the door. Uh, the Oval Office. Someone's actually knocks, thought President Wallace, before calling out, Come in. The door creaks in. As President Mills walks in, holding what seems to be another stack of reports ready to be slammed down to the President's desk. So, what do you have for me, Wilbur? Come uh, with an eviction notice, or are we in the office for the next four years? Wallace joked. Somewhere in between, sir, as he pulled one sheet out to lay in front of the President. It looks like we're off the radar this time. The President looked over the graph, seeing a jump from pitiful 36% to a measly 45%. So, what's this mean? That, sir, is your approval rating as rated by your career classification. In this case, it's for those ed in education, teachers. The ones we managed to get segregated a few months back. The President remembered the bill he fought with Congress over, but managed to achieve a beautiful victory that day. Coolly, the President asked, so, what, the teachers like me again? Mill said, sir, don't you remember the flag caught by the administration during the passing of the bill? Everyone... Everyone, one of us, was wondering if we're going to be in the office by this time next week. I mean, people were accusing you of bypassing the systematic process and opening up a trial against you. However, that 36% was last month, and it's it's had the largest jump since we managed to pass the bill. I, look, I think, Mr. President, that we're off the hook. The President looked at the report diligently before he opened a carton of cigars and lit one for himself, offering another one to the treasurer. Don't worry, we were never on the hook, he said, shaking hands with the treasurer. Later, Mills left, and Wallace was alone again. He finally removed his confident look and sighed so much that he thought his lungs might shrivel up. He didn't have to worry about those gosh darn teachers anymore. He took a, few, a dr large draw from a cigar before slouching back into his chair, finally on a bed of things. They're happy. Woodstock. The man on stage seemed to warp and then reform as he felt the strings of his guitar. Dozens of other men and women stood shirtless besides Eli as a sharp, echoing sound of an electric guitar colored the morning air. There was a rock uh, of noise and yells that seemed to blend into the background in the same way Eli felt almost himself blend into the hot, faceless mass of crowd. People weren't quite so into it as they had been a few days ago on Friday, but when Jimi Hendrix strummed the alabaster work of art, silence lay like a shadow. It continued, the notes continued, and Eli felt his skin vibrate with goosebumps. Muscles wanted to pulse and groove and waves with the rhythm, but it was already clear that this was not a dancing music. He could almost hear the lyrics in his head, even though Jimmy wasn't singing. The words of the Star Spangled Banner seemed to be crushed or torn apart by Jimmy's occasional bouts of speed followed by echoing, drawn-out chords. Eli wasn't exactly sure how much extraordinary performance was imagined, but he felt every little twist and riff ripple in his head and in his soul. Jimmy switched from somber, more connected-feeling chords into a wild riffs, and so seemingly on a whim. Eli's eyes remained locked on the guitarist, and the rest of the world seemed to just melt away in the worlds of color. Finally, it seems like the hard and fast playing was beginning to morph into something more akin to what Eli knew and loved. Eli prayed that the stars and stripes he saw in his mind's eye would never leave. He loved his country so much this place, and he hoped he would never have to leave. Far out the Hunter's Quarry, the Renegade submarine had been stripped clean of everything once the crew sur surrendered to the dozens of American warships, pursuing them across the Pacific. Like skies or flies on a hunk of meat, the CIA and Coast Guard closed off the dockyard the rogue submarine was stationed in. What the engineers found themselves was like no other. It was obvious that the captain had ordered some codes and machines destroyed, but the defector sub was the find American intelligence always wanted. Our working Japanese sub outfitted with the best they could f f could afford, with the help of a few defectors willing to detail what the translators missed out. The compiled report will give the U.S. Navy a new insight into enemies across the globe, and perhaps get the edge needed to prevent another incident like this from happening again? Heaven forbid they called her bluff. Holy crap, this is... There's really... This is great. This is great. I mean, the Lord said Wallace will prevail, and we are prevailing, my friends. Wow. A trade agreement with England. Mr. President, sorry to interrupt, but the State Department wanted you to be informed of this. England signed a trade deal with Bethlehem Steel Corporation today. They promised to provide the country with thousands of tons of stuff since England has been extremely friendly with us. We've approved the deal. It's going to mean a lot of jobs on our end. Improving foreign trade is always a good thing, hopefully. It's up to scratch and they step up orders. Glad to see America has a good partner. We got $10 million? That's basically nothing to me, but hey, we'll take it anyways. Look at all the spare cash we found. I love it. And we could do that. Spending too much is not good for the President. Uh, this would be nice. I would like to do this one for a better poverty rate, especially since our academic base is actually going down. So, but hopefully it won't hurt us too much. It was going up actually a little bit, but whatever. Ooh, research is going up. 
Pyre is slowly, slowly, slowly getting better, as well as industrial expertise and army professionalism. Not bad, my friends. Um, so, everything on the right side is pretty much done already. Oh, except for, or, of course, that one side over here, which doesn't even matter at this point anymore, so. Community action, disabling pacifism, recruitment outreach, send a bill to Congress, ready for war. Eh, I mean, that might be good for, like, the election stuff, actually, but whatever. Uh, let's, we could do a broad, a Pacific, Pacific trade zone, gauge oceanic interest. Indian interests, the Perth Conference. Subsidies for fruit. The Banana Republics will become more friendly with us. Quotas. I do want to get down here, so maybe we'll deregulate DC. Anger big business. Made in America, please the base. Yeah, that's probably good to do. Especially since it's September 1st, 1969. So we'll deregulate DC. Regulations, regulations, regulations. They come in many shapes and sizes, different names for different people. Liberals and pinkos call them environmental protections and workers' rights. Nazis call them efficient redistribution of the fear's money. But rational men see past the smoke and mirrors and find mounds of red tape, ready to choke the lights out of anyone who dares to found their own business. Become their own masters. Like royal... Loyal mutts, they follow the feds wherever they go, ruining the lives of many an honest entrepreneur at home and many an honest entrepreneur from abroad. R See, right now, America needs every last dollar it can get to survive the next decade. Dollars to build roads, bridges, dollars to pay our men and buy our guns, dollars to grow wheat in the plains and feed the American people. Right outside our borders, there's a whole mound of cash, ready to flow like manna straight into America's balance sheet, building all the roads, bridges, farms, and factories we want. All we need to do is loosen up a little, nothing too harmful, just some minor readjustments here and there, and all that capital will be ours for the taking. I get some political power that we don't need to. Nice. Alright, is this the Chinese rebels, maybe? Yeah. Suppressing Republican and Democratic influence will be good for the election year, so. They're happy, they're unhappy, and I'm really considering either doing healthcare or reform, welfare reform. Oh, look at that! Growth went up a little bit more. 4.4%. Almost less than 40 billion. That's not bad, my friends. Oh, and we get some technology done yet? No. We know this will be done. So once we get this one done. No, this one. We can build more factories, which would be great. Mm, we can do that one. That's fine. Sure, why not? These guys haven't collapsed yet, so it's good, but... What are they doing? New fundamental laws. Ah, they're almost done here. Oh, peace at last? Well, we'll see what happens with that. Uh. Alright, so after this one, I'm probably going to go ahead and do... Let's do the Union Makes a Strong, maybe? I can't remember when I needed to take this one. So... We'll do a broad and then we'll do that one. So, by the end of the war, America's sway over the world had shrunk to a fraction of what it was once ten years prior. They, Victus, the Axis powers triumphantly gloated as they carved the old world among themselves at America's expense. Germany, Italy, and Europe, and Africa. Uh, Germany, Italy, and Europe, and Africa, and the Japanese Empire in the Asia Pacific. Her pride wounded, her economy damaged, her influence gone, and her people close to revolt. America could do nothing but watch from the sidelines as the three eagles soared to great heights out of the ashes of the Second World War. That was two decades ago. Much has changed since then. For the world's newest empire, things have taken a turn for the worse. While others see the end of days, we only see a golden opportunity for America to return to the world's stage. For what else are we but risk-takers at heart? Let the degenerate tyrants suffer from malaises, just like all other empires before them. The American eagle shall spread its wings regardless, and it should not be denied its rightful perch at the top of the world. Look at all that peepee. Wow. We got big peepee, man. I love being America. We got nothing but big peepee here. Lots of big peepee. Less than 40 billion? Wallace is doing a great job. Well, according to who, who you ask. And actually, I decided to invest a little bit more in tanks and, a and uh, APCs just because I don't want. I like seeing red. But the 1969 World Series... The 1969 Major, uh, Major League Baseball was drawn to a close as the dominant Baltimore Orioles American League champions squared off against the National League champions, the New York Mets. Both teams had swept their opponents in the league championship games were set to face off in this year's World Series. The 1969 Baltimore o Orioles uh, squad had been considered one of the greatest baseball, baseball teams in MLB history. Led by slugger Frank Robinson, Robinson and pitcher Jim Palmer, the team won 109 games and only losing 53. On the other hand, the Mets achieved their first ever winning season this year. Led by coach Yogi Berra and pitcher Nolan Ryan. The mid-October match would go down as one of the most shocking upsets in the history of baseball. The Townsend Baltimore team were out of the Mets 4-1 on October 11th. But the Mets stormed back and won the final four games of the championship, defeating the Orioles 5-3 tonight in front of 57,000 fans. The team was quickly dubbed the Miracle Mets for their outstanding play against a formidable rival. It is the Mets' first World Series pennant, a series full of history of books. Nice. Alright, so what can we do here? Oh, they're going to need as much stabilization as possible. I, I'm pretty sure they're going to collapse, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. So, they're happy. That's what we care about. Can we unite the party a little bit more? Not yet. And that's fine. Cut down any more debt. That'd be really cool as well. How are we 49 minutes in this video? I don't understand. I really don't. But abroad? Cool. So, once the midterm elections are done, oh, 
Yeah, hopefully we can keep at least 50 senators. So we might either do towards Medicare or pursue Social Security. Senate votes. We can do this stuff. Oh, we can do that stuff as well. An ad with the union creating CCPs. Looks a little better in northern states. A Pacific trade zone. The greater East Asian core prosperity is feared. Japan's own collection of puppets and conquered nations forged in the greatest war in modern history. For nearly 20 years, they kowtowed to the, the chrysanthemum throne, offering tribute in both cash and kind to feed the bottomless pit of the Japanese industry. Just as boundless is its potential with the largest combined population of any trade block in the world, spanning across its busiest trade routes and the most resource-rich real estate in Asia. For years, America has been trying its darndest to get so much as a sliver of the Japanese wealth, only to be rebuffed by the smug Jap Japanese dudes time and time again. Past experience has proven that directly competing with them won't get America with what it wants. With a new, more flexible administration in the White House, it's about time we change track. Have state reach out to their counterparts in Tokyo. Let's see if they like the sound of us, a sound of a free trade compact with us. The death of Joseph Kennedy. A spokesman for the Kennedy family reports today that former President Joseph P. Kennedy passed away in his Massachusetts home at the age of 81. He is survived by his wife and six children. The elder Kennedy leaves behind a complicated legacy. His success as a patriarch of the Kennedy dynasty was substantial as his sons John, Robert, and Edward all made names for themselves in the political sphere. The elder Kennedy was elected president in 32 and presided over the slow recovery of the U.S. from the Great Depression. Despite serious criticisms for his non-interventionist policy, both in economic and foreign policy, he won a second term in 1936. The second term was mainly defined by Kennedy's continued reluctance to intervene in the European war and failure to fully prepare for the U.S. for global power projection against Japan and Germany. Kennedy was a source of much criticism in the aftermath of his presidency, which only increased after the failed intervention in England and the signed of the Akagi Accords by his successor Harry Truman. The Democrats would not hold the White House for another two decades when his son, JFK, succeeded the disgraced President Richard Nixon. Kennedy has been spent the last few years after his presidency retired from public life, having lost his son, Joe Jr., in a bombing raid over the Pacific. But he reemerged to help with his son's bid for the vice presidency. However, the elder Kennedy kept himself out of the public eye due to his widespread criticism of comments he made advocating detente with Germany to focus on confronting Japan and refused to help with his son Robert's uh, presidential run in 1964. Regardless of how American people remember him, Kennedy left a lasting mark on the nation's history, and his family will most likely continue to have a major role in the politics for the foreseeable future. His dynasty lived on with, well, his three dead kids. The Steel Mill in Ohio, 7.59, p.m. Another day, another dollar. Ohio Steel Mills uh, spent hours churning out steel to be using cars, construction, military equipment, shipbuilding, and more. Each and every one of them is staffed by hardworking men and women, working tirelessly to make ends meet. Most of them are in the union today. Plenty of them are furious. News spread quickly when President Wallace passed a few slew of business deregulations. Some change came slowly, some change came quickly. Suddenly, factories don't need to adhere to much safety regulations anymore. Old Johnny Regis burned his foot because of clothing regula safety regulations got scaled back. Corporate didn't want to maintain expensive safety suits anymore. The fire extinguishers didn't work. Perhaps... Might as well bring out the old ones to save money, right? Payroll complaints went from being solved in minutes to taking days. A lot of the new hires miss out on old conveniences and measures we had under regulation. All in the name of saving money. Members of the Steelworks Union are currently gathered outside their mill, smoking cigarettes and engaging in the complaints. The MPP claims to be par the party of the worker, but they're letting injustices like this slide. Wallace claims to be a populist man for the people, but the big corporations slips him a few dollars donations and he shuts his mouth. They consider long and hard striking, but loosening on strike breaking holds him back. With dismay. They wash your cigarettes and go on to the cars or the bus station. If, it, if, if this is life of the work from now on, it's not going to be easy. Unions forever to unions never? An argument for free trade. Though the MPP had no lack of spirit for fighting the Japanese, the cabinet could do little but stare glumly at the maps of the Pacific at weekly briefings. The co-prosperity sphere stretched from Azad Hind to Hawaii. Well, not Hawaii anymore. Boasting a colossal military, abundant resources, and the strategic depth to frustrate any advance. Realistically, America could do little but bide its time and contain the beast. So, for there's no other defeatist observations, Wallace grimly noted. Captive markets, the U.S. Trade Representative murmured. President Wallace eyed the representative warily, leaving the representative to cop before continuing. The sphere's economy is both is mammoth in size and converging. Manchurian steel, Chinese rice, and Malayan rubber are shipped cheaply to Japan, feeding both the Japanese military and consumer demand in the sphere's colonies, whereas the OFN's presence in the Pacific is limited to Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, and put bluntly, is an economic Frankenstein, a patchwork of independent economies soon together politically extended by tariffs and industrial redundancy. Are you suggesting we replicate Japanese economic serfdom in the OFN, Loss asked? The representative shook his head. No, but we're going to beat the Japanese. The OFN has to gradually open up with its largest economy leading the way, and unlike Japanese colonial dependencies, America can ensure everyone is paid at the market value. 
ensuring economic development and prosperity that could one day pave the way to both expand the OFN and outpace the sphere economically. Wallace we'll noted it slowly. It's a hard pitch for the unions, but if America can benefit, it might just be worth it. The freer the markets, the freer the people. Awesome. So, after the Pacific Trade Zone, we are going to go with the union makes it strong to gather some more support from the unions. After we do, of course, reintegrated circuits, of course. All right. Oh, can I click on that? Thank you very much. Uh, we can do that, but let's go here. I'm going to do all this up first. Let's go ahead and grab military construction four, shall we? All right. Worker unions, organizations protecting the average American worker from overreaching acts and breaches of justice committed by the American companies in the past. Many have come to support the mandates of such unions and the protections for the American worker, like large companies that have come into conflict with such organizations time and time again. Although these companies are large forces in the U.S. society, it is without question that the strength of an American blue-collar worker can come into blazing force in American politics. Thus, it is the administration's duty, even if it may restrict the economy, to capitalize on the support of such unions in some form of legislation, as Southern workers will appreciate the concern given to them by the government. While liberal-minded RDs will begin to appreciate our work. Some call unions a new revolution in social policy. Some call them a restriction on the American market, but the administration likes to call them votes. And that's what matters in an election year. Oh, what do we have over here? Oh, yeah, this stuff, too. Uh, terrorist attack in Italy? Well, that's not good. Nice, we got that one done. Oh, 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 look at that. So, this is actually only 35 of our 58 far right centers want this one. So, 35 plus 11, 46. So, there's plenty of room for Republicans. Okay. Well, let's see what Republicans are up to. Because we wanted to pass this out. Pa pass this out. Well, we don't want to pass out. We want to pass this. We don't pass it out, though. Oh, we have this too. My bad. Hmm. Yeah, resources. Why not? Cool. This should give us a little bit more support for this. Significant oil concessions. That's that's fine with us. Yeah, we should be able to do okay in four days. I want to see what happens here first. We need like one, two senators from the Republicans to join us. So there goes Sudan, and I think it's going to be a long, long time. President George Corley Wallace. That's his middle name. A man now th known throughout the South for the conviction of a bull mixed with the cunning of a serpent. Sat pensively, tapping a pencil upon his desk in the White House. Ahead of him, a bill laid on his desk, written down, ready for the proposal. The American Worker Union Consolidation Act should he should be fine. Worker help with the party unity, but a nagging feeling ate at President Wallace's mind. The worry that the RDs are just as stubborn dudes that they refuse to stand by the Alka. Son of a gun, Wallace muttered as he reached out towards the Oval Office's phone, twirling the dial a few times. Hello, yes, this is Wallace. Glenn, we need to talk. Just two days later, Pre and President Wallace found himself across the desk from the famed Ohio governor. Praise for his service, his dreams of the stars and stripes, his never-ending charm. So, Mr. President, what can I do to serve you today, sir? Glenn asked. I'm glad you asked, Glenn. Because we've got a lot to discuss up here. Tell me, Glenn, how cold does it get in Ohio? Wallace said, rising out of his chair and wandering towards the window. Glenn had to sit back and think about the odd question the president asked. Well, sir, it can get quite chilly up there in the winter. Why do you ask, sir? Wallace shot his eyes back towards Glenn. Because that's just how cold I feel proposing this union act... I feel proposing this union to act to the president, to the Senate, and if I don't get some more support from the Republicans like you, then I think we'll just be freezing to death, now won't I? Wallace asked, pouring a glass of whiskey for himself and the senator. Also, hospitality for votes. I understand your bargain, Wallace, but we're going to have to get something in return for all of this, sir. Throwing a few lines regarding Social Security, we can have ourselves a deal, sir. Wallace could hardly contain his frustration regarding his Glenn's demands. If he gave in, that means he could jeopardize his status as a strong man of the party, able to get the MPP to the presidency like he never had before. If he refused... AWCCA would be left alone and end up dead in the water. The silent room only rang out with the noise of a glass as Wallace edged it towards uh, Glenn, asking him for a drink once more. Uh, sorry, but not the drinking time, Mr. President. If we accepted this compromise, we'd have 17 su new supporters from the Repu 17 supporters from the Republican Party? There's only 15 of them! Where did you find the other two? What the heck? <laughs> okay, and so we have 46, 49. You got yourself a deal, Mr. Glenn. Alright, so we got... I don't know where the, the Republicans found two extra senators, but it sounds like they're cheating, but okay. We'll take it. We'll take it. And I do want to do American, uh, what is that, federalism or education? American education. Education quality increased slightly. Actually, you know what? Let's go do that one first. I'll do that one first because that'll help us out. Education is a cornerstone of America. A free public education for all people is a wonderful thing, and it lets America's best and brightest shine. That's exactly why we must keep good all American schools. Separate but equal is the law of the land. Like it or not, and the Wallace administration will make sure that the American kids get a squared. American education. So, academic base continues to go up, which might help us out. Jim Crow swords towards the sun. In 1877, U.S. congressmen reached a compromise that resolved the disputed presidential election of 1876 by giving the presidency to Rutherford B. Hayes. 
in return for ending reconstruction and permitting the establishment of Jim Crow laws. Almost a century later, these laws stand unchanged across much of the South. Few thought that the 70s would be a decade where the American Allman Brothers Band were banned from performing in their home state, where the Negro motorist Green Book was surpassed four years of publication, and where men and women of separate races still face criminal prosecution for falling in love. Yet, thanks to decades of federal ambivalence and injustice, and failure to pass the lasting Civil Rights Act have allowed our nation's greatest shame to endure. Black America's fury at the continued oppression has reached a boiling point. With the Reverend King and his principles of nonviolent resistance being dead for almost a decade, many blacks have turned to violence, organized or disorganized, as the only visible form of resistance. Segregated department stores hire armed guards to protect against vandalism, and Southern police have become increasingly militarized in order to squash their nearly monthly riots in black neighborhoods. In reaction, the Southern whites have been flocking to the KKK and other racist militias in order to brutalize blacks who protest injustice. The left NPP declares themselves not only the political force who truly fights for racial justice, Yaki claims to be the one man who can save white America from lawless and many take their word for it. If America doesn't take any, make any progress on this crisis, it'll only, be further, it'll only further deteriorate. May we may just be forced to choose between the survival of segregation or of our nation. If we don't end this injustice, then it will end us. You know, it's, it's kind of weird. Like, we don't do anything else, like, to... Well, they're happy with us still, which is good. But, like... Re reconciling, let's say, issues within the country. Like, other issues. Like, then again, Yaki is around, so... Let's see. We don't need to see that one. Political landscape... They're working well together. American society is still united. We can't approve of unity, but that's okay. AC, AWCA organizes, organizes success in Congress. The fight between laborers and labor organizers within the economy of America has become one of the greatest political feuds of modern history. With historical figures from the socialistic Marx to the laws of fair oppositions of the conservative movement making statements on how the relationship ought to function. Some have answered this call with work unions protecting workers from labor organizers. However, where conservatives would typically fight tooth and nail against such labor movements, President Wallace has step sidestepped in the heart of the party and forwarded the American Worker Union Consolidation Act, or AWCA, through, through the Senate, which has successfully been passed, introducing harsher fines to construction companies for violating union agreements. Once more, such a powerful act has brought about another divide. However, with those within the party and the executive branch have offered their wide celebrations of the, the uh, businesses or the act's success. Several reports of meetings between the leaders of the National Progressive Party, including President Wallace representing the far right, organizing successful celebrations and discussions on where to go from here. We don't want to split this country apart. We don't want to split Americans apart. All we want is a truer, better country. How could we potentially seek to foster such God-given glory if we, if we true patriots don't come together for once against those who seek to tear us down, said President Wallace in a brief meeting of the press. However, in recognizing the President's uncharacteristic choice to side with the workers and laborers across the country, some have chosen to express dissatisfaction within the President's work rather than coming together for joy. In particular, the fringe movements of the far right have organized several rallies protesting Wallace's administration's actions in several major cities across the Deep South, burning several banners and cr rallying cries adorning a speech against the President, with one Southerner saying, a Southern leader saying, President Wallace may be a man of his country, he may be a man of his people, and of good, right, good, righteous Christian God. However, we cannot stand by in allowing the power of this country to be toppled by soldiers and fear mongers. The party comes together on this one, boys. Okay, so we get a small amount of poor northern voters, which is a good thing. Good, good, good. All right, engineering, we got this stuff done, which is nice. Aircraft, let's get some better aircraft. And build more of America's successes. Nice, nice, nice. I'll just build, 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 yes, please. I'm going to let time go on with this since we're already building enough factories as is. Oh, it's going to give us so much more money, hopefully. Cut down that debt. Boost that GDP up. Love it. Nice. Don't want to forget New York City? Nope. No, sir. Anything else? 20 out of 25, maybe? Operational success is nice. Very, very nice. Uh, don't want to forget the West Coast either. Hopefully we get involved in Iran. Senate class, Senate class one Senate election season. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. But this happens like every you know Senate election season, so thank you. We're gonna help the NPP. We're gonna keep going NPP. I, uh, I think was it? Yeah, it's the Senate. It's only the Senate. It's not the presidency. Anything else around here? I don't see anything else. One under one. No, no. I think that's it. Cool. All right, let's campaign. So, yeah, I don't know. RD, like, victories, likely. Oh, boy, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. RD, victory. Everyone doesn't like the NPP. What do you mean? What do you mean, man? Great Lakes? We'll see what we can do about the Great Lakes then. Cool. They're happy. Uh, actually, the Deep South should be pretty happy with us. The Great Plains, eh, they kind of like us. The Deep South should... Tilting towards an RD victory. Wow. Hopefully we can win. But it's only the election, so those for those who pay. The RDs look better in the northern states, but Americans look more unified. Please voting based for those who pay. Um, we can get through this one, this one, this one, this one, and come to America, which might help us out, hopefully. So, 
This is probably the wrong thing to do, but we'll do it anyways. Which will then be packed into mighty freight trains and water barges ahead for America's largest ports, New Orleans, New York, uh, New Jersey. Ready to be hauled across the pond into the rest of the world. But God willing, every street corner from the Montgomery to Tokyo will soon be thrown in with the powerful engines of American Dodges, American Fords, American Chevrolets, and American Chryslers, all made in American factories such as this by American men such as you and me. Imagine today where the citizens of uh, Rome and Berlin and all the capitals of all the world's towns will be treated to the set of a morning parade. Not one drab, gray tank, or dour-faced, goose-stepping soldiers, but with a car stripped from the free world driven by Germans by Italians, Japanese, Europeans, and Asians and Africans, warring free with every belch of exhaust smoke. Now, who won't? Now, won't that be a set to see? That's not good for us, but it is what it is. I want to get through that part of the tree. I think I think that was supposed to be important for us to do. But foreign capital subsidizing your companies will have some effect in countering economic collapse. But for more lasting support, we should look into foreign capital. Neutral nations like Europe, like Sweden and Switzerland, are be begging to invest in our companies. So it's time to give them the go ahead. Let the foreign money flow and get our economy back on track. Welcome, financial ambassadors. Nice. Leaning R D. Yeah, Deep South. Well, there's only so many senators that are up for election right now, so go figure. Political landscape. Uh, we are united, though, so we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see. Actually, yes. Hurt the Republicans. Union with Harrington, a little more unified. They're happy, so. Set rights, cool. For those who pay and buy Americans. From all across the South, that's over 3,000 good, hard-working hard Southerners with new jobs that offer good pay. 3,000 men, young and old, doing their part to expand the largest economy in the world by leaps and bounds. 3,000 families delighted to hear that Poppy will come home tonight with a spring and a sep, 10 years younger. And most importantly, dollars in his pocket for the first time in a long while. I've spoken to some of these fine folks on my way here, Nathan Sullivan. Father, too, from Selma, who used to work in the dad's auto shop when he was young. George Green, an electrician, who came all the way from Corpus Christi looking for a new start in the heart of Dixie. Thankfully, uh, Tully Whitaker wants a plumber fixing pipes and leaks down to Sheree Port to feed a beautiful wife and three little hellions with all the little shrimp gumbo they can eat. But these three men and 3,000 more will be working in this factory in the coming months and years, churning out a hundred, churning out hundreds of thousands of cars a week. Nice. Very nice. I've got to wait for this one next. Actually, let's go here. Nice. Good. Good, 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 good. Oh, we can do Operation Oscuda, or whatever it is. There you go. Cool. And for those who pay? Nice. Buy American? Good. Oh, look, it's going up now. Look at that. Beautiful. 1.75. Pretty good. England purchases B-52 jet bombers, huh? Or Strato Fortresses. New England... Uh, East Coast... Toss-up in West Virginia... RD Victory... Yeah, it's not looking good for us. Oh, man. Uh, tilt, supper south. Let's do New England, maybe. Mr. President, something unusual is going on with England's purchasing orders. It seems that they've taken quite an interest in the B-52. One of the, their Royal Air Force personnel, a man named Arthur Harris, was on a trip to Seattle a few months ago and was very enthusiastic about the Strata Fortress. He apparently convinced Jellicoe to invest in the idea, and they approached Boeing with an offer. Boeing was completely happy with it and agreed. Now the State Department has to deal with both a major ally and one of our biggest companies pushing for the deal. Even worse, Boeing got some senators pressed for the deal, including Scoop and some others on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Of course, we've had to approve the deal with that kind of pressure. There were concerns about the officers' rather harsh language, particularly when it came to German civilians, but we figured that that was mostly a bluster anyway. Although, I'll admit, the fact that these can carry a nuclear payload makes me a bit nervous. Harris is going to do it again, huh? isn't he? Oh boy. Look at that. Less than 23 billion. Oh, cut that down anyways. There you go. Cool. Up next. Oh, we got some technology to do. Awesome. Let's get some better cash, shall we? And made in America. Now, from my understanding, the plant covers 8 square million, 8 million square feet of space. Roughly over 300 acres of prime Alabama soil. That means it took hundreds of thousands of tons of concrete to build. Concrete made with cement from the busy parts of Oregon. And sided with the latest, most cutting-edge heavy machinery straight out of Pennsylvania and Ohio to, for, to make the mightiest metal seeds ever to put to the winding asphalt pastures of our great state, each stamped with tiny imprints of the stars and stripes, our very own seal of quality. Built with the finest steel quality from the gigantic ironworks of Indiana, this auto factory now houses over 3,000 workers, managers, Foreman, and then of course you're supposed to read by Americans from all across the South. That's over 3,000 good hardworking Southerners, and then who's pay, and for those who pay, which will be packed in the freight train. So I was supposed to read it going left to right, but hey, whatever. I did it the Japanese way in which we went backwards. Uh, let's do this. Let's do Russia again. Why not? There you go. You can have stuff. You can have stuff. You can have stuff too. Nice. Best of luck. Good. Good. Less than 20 billion in debt. 
still an, oh great, we're still an MPP campaign. Oh, they're, they're running a respectable campaign. How's it looking now? Um, East Coast, Deep South. Yeah, I don't know. I hope that uh, oh, the Great Lakes is still pretty good for us though. The Great Lakes. I hope. I really, really hope that we can still do okay. Uh, so we did that. Made in America. Not bad. The next technology will be done in a while. So welcome to America. We've done it. The road was long, hard, and winding. We've and with dog-headed leftists and duplicitous friends hounding us from every godforsaken corner, but we've done it. From every corner of the world, businessmen of every race and nation, every faith and creed, find the best plans that I can charter to Washington D.C. Day after day, they stream into the Oval Office. Dignitaries, industrialists, uh, uh, magnates, and princes, oil barons, and in droves bigger than the last, with the best suits they can order and the shiniest smells that they can muster. Suitcases full of proposals and entreaties and promises to Uncle Sam. And with a few words, a few jokes, and a few handshakes, billions of cold hard dollars enter the treasury in a single meeting, and a matter of weeks, these dollars will travel all over the country, sprouting up farms, roads, factories, wherever they're needed, spreading America's wealth to her people wherever they go. The, ro the road was long and hard, winding, but through diligence and hard work, America is once again a bastion of freedom, democracy, and business. Cool. So actually, who's the incumbent? Oh, so no wonder we're going to lose probably lots because a, a lot of them are actually just already incumbents. Not all of them, of course, but like in the Upper South, but it's okay. Um, I want to do Great Lakes again. I really want the Great Lakes under us, so. They're happy with us, so we'll see what happens. Oh, we can do this stuff with these guys. I really don't care. Well, I'm supporting both sides, so we both so we can come out on top both times, so there you go. There you go. Empty equipment. Anything here? Can I suppress voters? No. Darn. Nice. Anything for budget? Yes, please. Actually, do we have anything for... Uh, not this one, this one. Nope, can't increase unity yet. I mean, we are united, so that's pretty good for us. Made in America. Hey, military construction 4, nice, very good. Let's go ahead and grab... We're done with our land doctrine. Maybe do naval doctrine? Global sea fleet? Yeah, I'll do the global fleet distribution, because that makes sense for us. Oh, we can't use naval XP for that? That doesn't make any sense. Huh. That's odd. Got 10 days left. Look at that. We got some authoritarian socialism. We got some national socialism. We got some social democracy. Operational success. Very, very cool. How's the Middle East doing? No, nothing in there. Uh, let's do strength of pro American sentiment. How about that? Made in America. You betcha. Nice. Welcome to America. And one more focus after that. And then what? And the episode maybe. Polls are updated. Oh boy. Um, leaning towards an RD victory. Oh boy. I hope at least we keep a, keep a majority. That's the most important thing in my mind. Just keep a majority in the Senate. A lot of them are far right incumbents. Oh, they're running run a respectable campaign, huh? Resource extraction. Very cool. Let's grab some more oil because we can. Solid MPP campaign. All right. And we're going to wait for the next one. Cool. And there we should go next. Happy 19, June 1st, 1970, of course. With, when you get later and later into the episodes, like, there's less events and less things to read, so things move a little bit more quickly. Come on, come on, let's go somewhere. Okay, operational success, success is good. Opposition's campaign, when do we do the next thing? There you go. Less than 14 billion. Jesus. That's so good. And I'll get that one too, because why not? Uh, the next one we want to do maybe is East Coast. That's a lot of people here. Maybe yeah, maybe do the East Coast. Centr is that Central East Coast or is that New England? I don't know. Delaware, Maryland. But New York and New Jersey. How do you do New York New Jersey? It's, new, it's really New England that you want. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll do that one. Because New England itself is this group here. So we'll see what happens. Welcome to America. And we can do this stuff. I kind of want to keep doing some of this stuff, too. Put God back in schools. Encourage patriotic education. Dixie loves this. Commies might say this hurts our education, but more, more patriotic population is always better. Because I do want to do this stuff later on, too. Become look a lot worse than the northern states. I encourage you to follow the southern states. Increase support in the south. Wall shall lead the way. Unite the party on economic stuff. Unite uh, uh, the party. We could do that, but lower business subsidies. Big business likes that. Um, maybe we'll do gauge Indian interest because I want to do. I really want to hammer this home in the next episode if we can do actually do that. So, gauge Indian interests across the Pacific with foreign lands sprawling across Asian lands lies a powerful force to contend against the Japanese Empire's coercions. India, the Indian people of the subcontinent have managed to survive against the prowling of imperial pred predators for centuries, and now they're forced to protect themselves against the Empire's growing spheres of influence. 
In this, we have, they have strived to protect their interests and an individual standoff. However, we know better. We know that the, flight, the fight against the Japanese does not require a single fiery will for change, but a group's collective fury in destroying the gross force in the world, not from the theories and estimates, but from American blood. Now, although we may seem foreign or even alien towards the Indian subcontinent or government, we must extend our hand through the ambassador to discuss adjoining the Pacific trading zone to fight against the Japanese empire, not, not one on one, but as brothers in arms. And maybe we actually will do one more thing here first before we end the episode. Oh, we'll read about the Indian Jewel first, and then maybe we'll end it. There we go. There you go. You can have all stuff. Cool. What that one do? Ooh, no, do it over here. You still have Japan. Cool. The Indian Jewel, my friends. Well, briefings were hardly a source of mirth for any president. <clears throat> the updates on the Perth block was a rare source of good news for President Wallace. Australia, New, Ze New Zealand, and Central America had joined the bloc with discussions on ongoing over the next round of tariff cuts and import quotas moving forward. Even if the details were being fleshed out by countless diplomats and lobbyists, Wallace was comfortable basking in the glow of his foreign policy. And today, the State Department had another interesting proposal. Wallace thumbed through the papers, scarcely hiding his growling and his excitement. The numbers were breathtaking. Millions of consumers in a country that was still trying to find its footing on a global economic ladder. Geographically positioned to block the sphere's expansion further westwards, India would be, would be a prize indeed. The Secretary of State clears his throat. It's not a done deal. The Indians may have diverged political or economic interests from us, and convincing them to join will be an order of magnitude more difficult than we've had to date. Otherwise, we'll end up with egg on our face if they turn us down. Those words echoed in Wallace's mind. India was a juicy prize about how much was Wallace willing to give for it. And there was still the price or the matter of the existing Perth Block members who wouldn't be pleased if Indians were given a sweet deal. Reach out to Indians, see what they want. Consolidate Perth Block comes first. Oh, please focus the Indian market. Um, the Indian market. Oh, completes, unlocks the focus and completes it. Oh. Oh, so we have to, oh, okay. Um, any quotas. You know what? I want to reach out to the Indians to see what they want. So we'll do that one. But I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, which you probably already have by this point if you wanted to or not. But I'll see you tomorrow as we shall see what the Senate has it hold for us and we'll see what else we can do for good old USA. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.